Hi everyone, welcome to the ninth video of Redux Toolkit tutorial series. So previously, we have moved our login functionality into create a sync thunk and implemented the extra reducers. So in this video, we will learn more about extra reducers. So we will take a use case. In this application, we have implemented the Google functionality. So when I click on this Google button, it will allow me to Google sign in. So now we will move this Google functionality into our create async thunk. Let's do it. Let's copy this code of Google functionality and remove these. Go to the odd dot slice. Inside this slice, I will create a new async thunk for my Google functionality. So I'll write const google sign in is equal to create a sync thunk inside that i'll pass my first parameter as string google sign in and the second parameter i will pass a sync function we don't need any value from the login.js file let's paste our code we have to import the set doc so i'll import it Let's import the doc also. So our Google sign-in thunk functionality has been completed. Now we have to write the extra reducers for it. So as you noticed, the Google sign-in functionality and the login functionality returning the same value user info. So in this case, I will copy these three cases and paste below. I will change login.pending to Google sign-in.pending google sign in dot fulfilled google sign in dot rejected we don't need to change anything because we are setting the same state for google sign in also now dispatch the google sign in from login.js we will dispatch it from google button dispatch google sign in i think we haven't exported it so let's export that Let's go back Google sign in. Now let's check our application whether we are able to Google sign in or not. Click on the Google sign in button. Let's first open the Redux Dev Tools. Click on that. Choose our email address. Now our case has been fulfilled and we are getting the value. And in the user info, we are getting all the details. Now let's move back to our application. Open auth slice. Now you have noticed one thing that we are setting same variables in login cases and in the Google sign in cases. So is there any way can we make this common if we are setting same variable in two async thunk cases? Yes, we have a way. Let's replace add case to add matcher. So inside the add matcher, we will call a function is any of that is provided by Redux toolkit. You can scroll up and see this is provided by Redux toolkit. So we can pass our first case that is login.pending. And the second case will be Google sign in.pending. So copy it and paste it. Now we can remove it because there is no need. We can remove the other three cases also because we will make it common. So we can change the add case to add matcher. Same here. I think we have to remove this also. And here also we have to pass is any of. Let's copy this and paste here google sign in dot fulfill same we have to do here we have to call is any of and that will take login dot rejected and google sign in dot rejected so this is any of function make sure 
either one of the condition is true then it will allow us to move inside this condition so now check the behavior of our application click on logout let's click on sign in again now we also got the fulfilled state and we are also getting the user info properly but remember one point you should use the add matcher when we are setting same states into two thunks so in our case the state is same for login and the google sign in so we used add matcher if you are setting different values for other thunk then you have to define more cases so for example if i implemented sign up functionality in the create async thunk and the sign up functionality setting different state so in that case i have to create three more cases with pending fulfilled and rejected state i can't use add matcher so that's it for today's video in the next video we will cover some key points about configure store and create async thunk thank you for watching this video we'll see you in the next one